Hi everyone, my name is Megan Constantino, Librarian of the Grolier Club. I am so pleased to have this opportunity to share with you some works in our collection relating to Latin American and Caribbean printing history. I will be showing you some items that have been in our collection for some time and a few others that I recently acquired. The last few items are examples of contemporary printing from Latin American and Caribbean countries, which I have bought um, recently in the last six months with a great deal of advice and assistance from the multi-talented Farida Mareb, who will be following my presentation with a live discussion contextualizing these works in the larger world of contemporary Latin American printing. Um, because we have a limited amount of time, I'll only be saying a few words about each item, but I hope this will be enough to spark interest. And I also um, think this is a good time just to mention that Latin American and Caribbean printing is not a specialty of mine. And in fact, much of what I know and will be presenting today has come from preparing for this conference and presentation. Um, but I've enjoyed learning about these items very much and I hope you will too. Um, but first, I'm gonna take a few minutes to tell you about the Grolier Club in our research library. The Grolier Club is the oldest society of bibliophiles in the United States, founded in 1884. We are located on Manhattan's Upper East Side and were founded by nine book collectors, book artists, and printers, all men, until 1976 when we first admitted women, um, who were reacting in part to what they saw as the degradation of the book in the industrial era. Um, this was sort of in accordance, in accordance with the contemporary English private press movement. Um, they were inspired by the artistry and craft of the Western book, especially early printing, and sought to establish a place where fellow book lovers could gather. The idea of coming together out of a love of books also inspired our name. The Grolier Club is named after the 16th century French book collector Jean Grolier, who was one of the earliest collectors who sought to own printed books um, versus manuscripts for their beauty, the beauty of their production, rather than just strictly for the contents of the text. Um, Grolier often had the motto for Jean Grolier and his friends stamped on his bindings, um, which kind of conveys this, this humanist idea that books and learnings are best shared among friends. We currently have about 800 members um, coming primarily from the United States and Western Europe, but from all over the world as well. Um, our members include book collectors, book artists, academics, antiquarian booksellers, and librarians. We have seven exhibitions per year on various bookish topics. These are all open to the public, and they're usually supported by public lectures and events, which we are doing both in person and online. Um, and if we were having this conference in person, it would most likely take place here in our newly renovated exhibition hall. Our research library is open to the public as well. Here's a shot of our beautiful reading room, which was designed in 1918 and has changed very little since then. The library is a focused research collection of more than 100,000 volumes on the art and history of the book, primarily the Western book including bibliographies, histories of printing and graphic processes, type specimens, and fine and historic examples of printing, finding and illustration. We have particularly strong holdings in the literature of collecting in the book trade, including catalogs of private libraries, antiquarian bookseller and book auction sales, um, which I will be touching on a little bit today. The vast majority of our collection is fully cataloged and publicly searchable through our online catalog. And, um, and our archival finding aids. And if you want to learn more about the collection, you can check out our website at www.grolierclub.org. And I'm always happy to field questions directly. You can just email me. The tradition, traditional emphasis on our collection has been Anglo-American and Western European materials. Um, and indeed, these do remain our research strengths. Like many Eurocentric collections, this has led to a privileging of certain histories over others, uh, which it is important for me to acknowledge at the outset. However, I have been delighted um, and surprised to find some interesting Latin American material as well. Um, and as you will see at the end of my presentation, I have made efforts with the um, rather limited resources at my disposal, by which I mean primarily time, um, to add a few more items to the collection, which I intend to use in presentations, teaching, and exhibition. The first item that I want to show you is something I bought a few years ago, um, 
really just on a uh, at just gut feeling. I thought it was interesting, but I don't know really very much about it at all. This is a type specimen issued by the Argentinian type founding firm by the name of Cirilo y Muchada. A. It is not dated, but one of the specimens has the text July 9, 1816 to 1916, commemorating the centennial of the Argentinian Declaration of Independence. I've not been able to find out anything about this um, type, finder, type founder, but I did find it interesting that many of the texts selected for the specimen seem to suggest a radical political bent. 1916 is a really important moment in Argentinian history, marking a turning point from the domination of conservative forces in Argentinian politics to a more radical nationalist constituencies. This began with the election of Hipólito Irigoyen, who in 1916 won control of the government through the first national elections under universal male suffrage. Um, and here is his name in the type specimen at the center, right above the word radical. Um, there are other suggestive words and phrases throughout the specimen, like this one on the right, Mambru se fue a la guerra y yo también. The first words of this line are from a popular children's song about going to war. Here on the um, lower right is an illustrated version from a 1954 Argentinian children's magazine, um, not in our collection, sadly. Um, but the second part, y yo tambien, does not come from this song and may have been the author's interjection. Um, it's hard for me to know whether these phrases indicate a political bent on the part of the type founder or whether he was trying to attract a certain customer base. Perhaps, um, for example, he was providing type for the radical press. I don't know. Um, but whatever the case for me, this type specimen shows an intimate relationship between literature, oral culture, printing, and politics, which takes on a more nuanced significance when we consider the time and place at which it was produced. We have a small collection of Latin American bookseller catalogs, uh, which seem like they might be a good resource, resource for further study. An early one is this 1851 bookseller catalog from Libreria Mexicana, one of Mexico City's largest bookstores in the 19th century. The stock catalog offers approximately 2,000 French books dating from 1753 to 1851, on subjects like natural history, medicine, fortification, magnetism, mining, phrenology, and prostitution. On the right is a selection of a few other catalogs from various countries in our collection, um, dating mainly to the 20th century, a few from the 19th century. Um, they come from, from Mexico, Argentina, and Brazil. In my experience um, curating this collection, bookseller catalogs are great resources for understanding the history of the book trade, the importation and distribution of books, and to some degree, the history of book ownership and reading. They can be mined for data, and they're often interesting graphically. And they can also be considered within the context of bookstores as social spaces and nodes of print distribution networks. My next item relates to the history of private book collecting. Teodoro Becu was a major Argentinian collector in the first half of the 20th century. He collected Western European books from spectacular medieval manuscripts to incunabula to 20th century literature, as well as specimens of Argentinian fine printing. According to the three volume private library catalog of his collection, which, um, is shown on the left, published posthumously in 1950. He did not limit himself to a specific chronological period, but collected items from all periods that he found beautiful for their typography or valuable for their texts. And his biographer affectionately writes, Los amo a todos en todo momento y en todas sus expresiones, or he loved them all, at all times and in all their expressions. His collection was sold anonymously at auction in New York in 1952. Aside from his own collecting activities, Becu took a major role in organizing an important exhibition in 1940 in Buenos Aires designed to celebrate the 500th anniversary of Gutenberg's invention. 
A contemporary reviewer called it, quote, the most significant Gutenberg quincentennial celebration held in the Western Hemisphere. Beku wrote the introductory essay to the accompanying volume, shown here on the right, published under the auspices of the Argentine Minister of Justice and Public Instruction, and sponsored by the Sociedad de Bibliofilos Argentinos. The catalog lists in great detail nearly 700 volumes covering 500 years of printing in the West, including over 150 in Cunabula, as well as about 70 examples of fine printing from Argentina, dating between 1781 and 1940. Um, here's the first page of the Argentinian material. Many important items were lent by Argentinian collectors, including Becu and others, and the catalog itself was finally printed by Guillermo Kraft in Quilkin type under the direction of Becu himself. Um, the Golier Club was involved in this exhibition as well. We lent our copy of the Book of Common Prayer printed at Samuel Updike's uh, Marymount Press. And we also have in our collection what appears to be Beku's own specially bound copy of the exhibition catalog. The club has a very nice collection of items created by Antonio Frasconi, a Uruguayan American artist of Italian descent, best known for his striking woodcut art. As a young artist in Uruguay, he made drawings and woodcuts on political subjects, and with a scholarship from the Art Students League, he came to the U.S. to New York in 1945, drawn, he says, to the country's vitality, where he produced woodcuts and illustrated books on many subjects, including works of literature in the Spanish language or in other languages with Spanish translations. Many of these were children's books, like this multilingual picture book shown here, uh, Frasconi preferred woodcut as a medium in part because it could be done at home by anybody. He believed that anyone could and should make art. He was often critical of formal programs of study and particularly, uh, particularly avant-garde art theorists who, quote, take courses in college and know all about art but nothing about themselves, end quote. Um, and as a former art student myself, uh, Frasconi's concern about students who seemingly know all the answers but um, don't quite know the questions really resonated with me. <clears throat> in 1996, we had a major exhibition on Frasconi's book art at the Grolier Club, curated by book designer Jerry Kelly and Monica Strauss. And we also have a number of posters designed by Frasconi, including a handful for La Casa del Libro in Puerto Rico, and another for the fourth Latin American book fair held at New York University in 1990. Finally, in 2009, the Grolier Club hosted an exhibition of Cuban artists' books and prints. Um, the exhibition was called Libros y Grabados de Artistas Cubanos, 1985 to 2008, which focused on the innovative work of Ediciones Vigia. Founded in 1985 by a group of young artists and writers caught up in the political, social, and cultural turmoil of late 20th century Cuba, Ediciones Fijia produced, and still produce, elaborate and sophisticated handma handmade books characterized by invention, poignant poetry, and technical mastery of print media, especially using found or donated materials gathered from newspapers, butcher shops, and factories. Um, the curator of this exhibition, Linda S. Howe, who's a professor at Wake Forest University, donated four Ediciones Vigia books to the Grolier Club Library, including a um, bibliography on the left. And on the right, um, I think one of the most moving pieces, which is a work authored by Cuban poet Nancy Morejon, entitled Anda Menzieta, with drawings and calligraphy by Rolando Estevez Jordan. Morejon wrote this elegy to Cuban-American artist Anya Menzieta, who died tragically young at the age of 36 in 1985. Menzieta came to the U.S. from Cuba as a refugee in the early 1960s and grew to become a U.S. avant-garde artist in the 1970s and early 80s. She was a performance artist, a sculptor, a painter, and a video artist who explored themes relating to feminism, violence, life, death, identity, place, and belonging. She is best known for her, quote, earth body artwork, in which she used the earth as a sculptural medium, um, and in particular, the Silhouette series, 
produced between 1973 and 1980, in which she created female silhouettes, often using um, her own body, and using natural materials such as earth, mud, leaves, twigs, and even blood to emphasize the female body as the site of male aggression and colonization. For the last portion of my presentation, let's move on. I will show you a few examples of some more recent works I have purchased for the collection. My focus here has been on fine press, typography, and ephemera that deal in their contents explicitly with the history of printing, writing, or letter forms, um, which is in line with our collection strengths. And I'd like to begin again by, by thanking Farida Marev for sharing her valuable time, connections, and expertise with me. I wouldn't have known where to begin without her help, and I'm very excited to hear what she has to say. Imprenta Rescate is an Argentinian printing and editing workshop located in Buenos Aires, established by Leandro Jacob. Leandro uses a typographic, a typographic press from 1905 to produce posters in various sizes, ephemera, notebooks, and booklets. The idea of rescate or rescue plays on the idea of using graphic materialization of the word to rescue the significance of the alphabet of handwriting and drawing, the beauty of the graphic arts to the human senses, or to connect our senses to the larger world through craftsmanship. This large wall, po uh, wall poster shown here is printed with wood types and presents a quote by Rodolfo Walsh, an Argentinian writer and investigative journalist who was killed in 1977 for his exposure of the human rights violations of the military junta that had taken over the government. It translates roughly into English, the walls are the printing press of the people, playing with the idea of printing as a tool of democratic liberation and resistance against repression. I find the use of the politicized poster form as a genre in much Latin American presses to be um, especially powerful and I'm curious if anybody would like to comment on that in the Q&A. The next piece is a woodcut alphabet by Puerto Rican printmaker and book artist Consuelo Gote. Gote graduated from the University of Puerto Rico in 1970. She completed her master's degree at Columbia University in New York in 1971. She began as an apprentice in the graphic workshop of the School of Architecture with Jose Torres Martino as her teacher and in Lorenzo Omar's studio. And she also studied printing here at the Center for Book Arts in New York. She works in silkscreen, line of prints and woodcuts, does font design and has created artist portfolios and books in which image, image word and design mesh together. In, he, in her alphabet, which we acquired, this is a portfolio of 26 woodcut letters of, of the alphabet. Each letter is printed on a single sheet and inhabits its own imaginary landscape of swirling organic energetic forms. And one of the things I love about this set um, that she actually suggested to me is that each letter can stand on its own or be combined to form words or of course constitute the full alphabet. Um, so I will conclude with a cluster of pieces related to printing in Venezuela. First is the volume on the upper left published in 2007 to celebrate the many honors awarded to Venezuelan graphic designers over decades in the Leipzig International Book Art Exhibition. Between 1971 and 2007, Venezuela received 33 awards at this annual competition. In 2005, the Gutenberg Prize, the highest award, went to Venezuelan book designer Alvaro Sotillo. At the time Sotillo won, China and Venezuela were the only non-European countries who have received this prestigious prize. Sotillo has won many prizes for his book design work, which um, is marked by a kind of lyrical finesse. I find it so delicate and precise. I bought this lovely work on conservation on the right, um, written by Miguel Arroyo both a practical manual um, and a beautifully designed work by Sotillo, which won the Diploma of Honor in 1980 and the Medalla de Plata in 1982. So while you're reading about how to fix tears in your books, you can also appreciate the masterful mise en page. 
And then here on the lower left um, is a photo from the 2018 Leipzig competition showing Venezuela still represented here. While more Latin American countries have been featured at Leipzig in recent years, they are still vastly underrepresented. So Venezuela's long record of participation is quite significant. And finally, um, I want to end by featuring a project by Farida herself. Uh, although we designed a lovely book um, by her called El Fio, I want to focus here on an item she kindly included as a gift. It is a reproduction of a Venezuelan passport from a project entitled Notions of Exile. This project involves the printing of 300 um, similar passport reproductions, which are blank inside and snail mailed to individuals who are encouraged to add their own personal images and stories. These will, when returned, quote, create a major collaborative artwork that explores the vast histories of identity, migration, ancestry, and legacies, end quote. The interventions, as Farida calls them, will be presented as an online archive. I think this is an important project because it uses both traditional mediums like printing and forms of communication like the U.S. mail system um, and participatory art making. Um, and combines them with contemporary tools like online archives to communicate its message. Through the form of a passport, which is familiar to all of us um, as a site of potential freedom and individual identity mixed with the threat of repression and governmental control, Notions of Exile, for me, conveys its themes in a kind of very powerful and elegant way. Um, so that is all I have. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to the next portion of this presentation.